J.A. Wiley in his book, Jesuitism. Our Father in heaven, blessed be your name. May all the world know that you are the only true loving, loving, living, literal God, our Jehovah, who gave us your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. And in his name I pray, amen. We are now reading chapter 19, and this is the continuing part of our reading, part 6. Page 114, second paragraph. But if he has little in hand, he has much in prospect. He is, in fact, a great landowner in disguise. The acres, waste, or cultivated which he surveys from his cabin door are his and his right to them is secured by title deeds more ancient by far than those of the proudest noble in the land. So has he been taught from his youth up the truth of what has been so taught him he never for a moment doubts. At church or market laying down or rising up, his dream is ever of a great era of jubilee. When this state of limitation is Dr. Moriarty has ingeniously phrased it shall come to an end and there shall come to himself and his co religionist a great forth coming forth going from his house of bondage and every man shall enter into his orig original possession. Meanwhile, every day that passes over him and every repetition of the priestly lesson bring with them an accession to the bitterness of that bondage in which he believes himself to be held and fan into a yet fiercer flame the vengeance that burns within him against the spoilers and oppressors who have robbed him of his inheritance and are living in idleness and splendor. While he has no dwelling but the hovel, no cloth but rags, and no board at which to seat himself with his family save one, which instead of satisfying their wants only mocks their hunger, and not less does he detest and curse the laws which throw their sanction over this robbery and oppression. We behold here the rot of Ireland's miseries, with these facts before him, and we repeat that the proof of these facts exhibits an overwhelming abundance. Can any man doubt that we touch the source of all her mischiefs? The secret diocesan statutes of Leinster, the diocesan statutes of Dublin, the numerous documents of similar character with Mr. McGee and Gee deposited in the English universities and in the Dublin University, to remain there the monuments of the conspiracy of the papal hierarchy against the throne and nation of England. As the censors of Korah and his companions were laid up in witness of their rebellion, the eighth volume of dense theology, which the Irish bishops, Irish bishops published in 1832, and which is not in what it bears to be, for dense never wrote a line of it, but a compend of papal laws to enforce in Ireland. The subsequent utterances of Cardinals Wiseman and Manning on this point, the more recent declaration of Popish priests on platforms in the press from form a body of evidence so distinct and unequivocal as to the laws in force on the consciences of Irish Papists and the indoctrination which for a generation the Irish peasantry had been receiving that the attempt to gain their indictment neither can nor will be made. When we think of what has been going on in Ireland these 50 years, the course of nature must change and a miracle must be wrought to sever the link betwixt cause and effect before anything else can happen in Ireland save just what has happened, even a state of things, with the times described as a more frightful picture of triumphant anarchy than, than can be found in any community pretending to be civilized and subject to law. We will read the next paragraph the next time. And God our Father, continue to bless you. And it's only begotten divine son, Jesus Christ, be gracious to you now.